Uh, greetings, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Welcome to uh, On Point Fighting once again. And today we have a, a special guest, one of the most important voices in the country today in terms of a uh, warriorship, modern day warriors. And that is none other than Master Eugene Floyd. Master Floyd, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Great. You're coming through loud and clear in the microphone, too. Appreciate that. So we're going to jump right into it without further ado. Uh, Master Floyd, when I think of you, I think of like these four different aspects um, that I know you as. I know you first as the competitor. Then I knew you as an instructor. Then I knew you as a coach of Sudden Impact. And mm -hmm. I know you were a student, but I never knew you as a student. So we're mm -hmm. going to start there with Master Floyd, the student. So yes. take us back to the beginning of how you first and how and when you first got started in, in martial arts and how you started started with that particular style, that system, you know, under Master Godfrey? Yes. Well, actually, um, my first uh, martial arts instructor was Charles Wilson. And to tell you that uh, they are two of the greatest martial artists I've ever met. Uh, our great grandmaster uh, have what I say, um, the most beautiful and intelligent type of martial arts, which especially teaching uh, inner city uh, young people to just really be good people. It's not hard, but following the basic routines of, of martial arts, uh, not just uh, about uh, punching and kicking, it's about saving people's lives, even to the point where, just like I said, I'm so glad that I'm being able to tell uh, a little bit of Grandmaster Godfrey's story, which is my story as well. Uh, I grew up uh, in a very, what, tough time, uh, the, the riot, riots and, and things like that. We're we talking and, the 60s? We're talking the 60s now? Yeah, well, yes, yeah, the late 60s, yes, in the okay. 70s. Reality is that um, uh, a preacher didn't save my life, which I went to a lot of what uh, preachers and everything, but I can guarantee that my uh, prayers and everything were heard by God because, as I was saying, uh, uh, the trauma from the, the North riots was one of the scariest things to happen to me as a, a, a young person. And it made me very, very, um, what's the word? Um, sad because it seems as if uh, so much negative and uh, uh, evil uh, things going on or, and then uh, growing up in that type of uh, atmosphere it become one or two things you can either become a monster or a hero and my luck and my blessing was meeting grandmaster frederick Byrne, dr taylor who truly is and will always be a martial arts saint to some degree uh, he took us off the street. He taught us how to defend ourselves in the most clever and most intelligent way. Uh, uh, the art of not fighting, like Bruce Lee talked about, does exist. My instructor taught me that and all of his uh, true disciples to be uh, what we say uh, good ninjas, not bad ninjas. But when you started with Charles Wilson, uh, uh, number one, how old were you and what, what system or style was that? Oh, uh, that was uh, the Goshishan system. And actually the uh, 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 Charles Wilson is still my instructor as well. Uh, Godfrey was uh, a, a, a true martial artist where uh, his goal was to uh, learn as much what martial arts as possible so he could pass it on to his students. Uh, I'm really happy to be able to do this because, uh, yes, uh, ninjas keep secrets and they try to make sure that, you know, uh, not too much knowledge is given uh, to people because some of the stuff is very, very dangerous. Absolutely. And if a person doesn't have a, a, a root in what we call uh, religion, uh, then a warrior can become a monster. And so the rules and regulations that our uh, instructor did were to make sure that we <laughs> did the things that we pulled to do in the house, make sure our, our, uh, our families are looked out and protected and to be uh, 
really uh, truthful. I'm really happy to be able to say these things because uh, our grand, our great grandmaster was very um, what's the word? He's <laughs> a real ninja. He didn't like to have anybody know anything about him. But I will, uh, I will tell you that uh, as his, um, I wouldn't say this. Um, I would, I'm still his what student. Uh, uh, even though he has bestowed on me the rank of Grand Master, which is the highest what, level, I will never uh, say that I am the uh, the highest level. My great Grand Master is the highest what level. So uh, we're going to talk about Eugene, and Eugene's going to talk about him as much as possible. Is he still alive? No, he passed away uh, uh, a few years ago. But uh, that's another beautiful thing about uh, what we call um, the martial uh, rules and martial laws is that uh, a true uh, grandmaster, before he leaves, must make sure that he has his uh, student who will carry on his journey, not to uh, uh, make another uh, route because of all routes are the same, is that you teach a child the right things in their grow up to be great what people. So how, how old were you when you started with um, uh, Master Wilson? And then how did you make that trend transition to uh, to Master Godfrey? Yes, um, um, uh, <laughs> the funny thing was that um, we were running around looking for uh, uh, um, senseis and masters because uh, we saw those Bruce Lee movies. <laughs> okay. Okay. These movies let us to say, you know what? We got to learn some of this stuff, especially for living in the inner city of Newark. And uh, we actually went on a, uh, um, even like my uh, friends and our brothers in uh, around our streets, uh, uh, 33. Uh, the reality is that we were, uh, I would say, we were Bruce Lee fanatics. Because to see a person with, uh, be that small and be that strong, and be that wise, is something to look up. Uh, heroes are very important in this world, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, so, yes, how old were you when you started that 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 oh, search? Oh, uh, Charles, Charles Wilson. I was uh, no more than uh, seven years old. Seven years old. Wow. Seven. Yes. Yeah. That was actually before the Bruce Lee movies hit the screen, then. Yes, most definitely. Yes. Yeah. Well, we couldn't wait for it to what happened. <laughs> but as I was expressing, uh, um, the some people only look at the word violence and everything else, and they don't look at the word truth. Uh, my grandmaster told us to run when trouble comes. And being an inner city uh, person, <laughs> i like, this is not martial arts. This is stupid. I do it. I already know how to run, you know what I'm saying? But right. it's a time to what? It's a time to run. Uh, 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 you could have the best techniques on earth, but the best technique in, in, in the war is to be able to survive through the what, war. And, and that's that, 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 that system that, that Charles Wilson taught, is that the same system as uh, the Master Breakers in? Uh, actually, uh, no. Uh, Go Shishan was uh, his uh, um, martial arts name, Go Shishan, uh, which uh, it meant uh, that it's a, 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 a very serious uh, uh, martial arts that was brought over from Japan. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the martial arts movies, actually, that wave of the Bruce Lee movies, you know, came later. Five yes. Fingers of Death, like 72, 73, mm -hmm. Five Fingers of Death was the first one. So mm -hmm. when, what attracted you to martial arts? Because you actually started then before that wave of, of movies hit. Well, just like I was expressing is that um, I was blessed to uh, be in um, Newark. And Newark had quite a few uh, martial arts uh, schools. Just from seeing the little uh, movies and even before Bruce Lee, there were martial arts movies and everything. Right. But the reality is that, um, uh, you know, when you see the uh, good guy just beat the heck out of the bad guy with ease and everything. And I'm telling you, as a, as a young uh, person, I was like, 
I want to learn this stuff. <laughs> and, and the main thing was that it was so funny if I tell you the uh, next part after that was that uh, the search for the, uh, what's the word, the master is a true thing. You have to actually uh, find them. You, you, you couldn't get them on the uh, uh, or telephone or <laughs> anything like that. So you were uh, like, you were like Tymac in the last dragon looking for the master. <laughs> correct. Exactly. <laughs> true. Yeah, that's, that is exactly the truth is that, you know, uh, uh, I, by seeing the movies, I knew that there were people who uh, seemed like they could do uh, the impossible. And I found out that it's real. Uh, like the movies, of course, the bottom line, our, our first teachers in the, in the city was the movies, you know? Right. Uh, those, uh, Kung Fu movies where they uh, dubbed it. We could even, we used to have fun because a lot of times you would watch the, uh, the, the movies in the voice couldn't catch up with the mouth. <laughs> yeah, right, so, right, right. The yeah, dubbing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So how long did you stay with, how long did you stay with Master Wilson? And then how were you introduced to, to Master Godfrey? Well, yes, I, um, shoot, uh, I was like, uh, what I tell you, a uh, Ninja Turtle uh, um, a follower for what many years. Uh, but as I was expressing, <laughs> Um, I think I always had a, a, a ninja mindset, which was, you know, I wanted to learn as much as possible with this amazing thing that I saw in the, uh, in the movies. And to put it succinctly, uh, learning the martial arts was a very important thing living in Newark. Yeah, it was a journey. Matter of fact, actually, uh, um, with Charles Wilson, I was blessed to, he had uh, opened up a class uh, in, in Newark in the uh, grammar school. And uh, me and uh, several of my friends uh, who were, we were um, doing our own martial arts stuff. I mean, the copying of what we saw in the movies. And I can tell you by, uh, uh, by the grace of God, uh, Charles Wilson was a true and still is a great what, uh, martial artist. Uh, okay. Well, the only reason why uh, I uh, uh, I was not allowed to, to finish his uh, uh, teaching is that uh, I I think uh, uh, it really was mostly my fault. Is that uh, I was uh, I wasn't even I was the uh, yellow belt. And one thing about me is that uh, I think I had Bruce Leeitis, which made me think that I could just be with anybody. But it's a whole lot of whole a whole lot of hard work goes through it. So I um, I would always uh, um, uh, uh, sensei would tell me to spar with this any person that watching. I like yes, I, I don't want to spar with him and say why I say because he is. Not, I'm not just not ego is just the truth. Is my mindset was like uh, he not injured and I ended up uh, getting injured by a higher rank and my mother took me out of the work school. But it was all on me. I, I pushed the wrong buttons and wasn't prepared to uh, have my uh, I would say my superhero time. You know, right. So then how were you so, introduced to Master Godfrey and how old were you at, at that point? Uh, yes, at that point, my mom wouldn't let me what, go to what, karate or anything like that because she thought I got hurt because of, of negligence or whatever. But it was not so. I Now as an old person, I can tell you that uh, my uh, ego was uh, overwhelmed with the um, movies and didn't know that you can achieve those things, but you have to really follow all of the things that your true master teaches you. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it was like I told you, I mean, uh, uh, the a beautiful thing is that uh, uh, I even learned that uh, Grandmaster Dockery and uh, um, Charles, uh, they both uh, had uh, honor and respect for our great great grandmaster and i try to tell people that uh the martial arts uh and is uh my training more so than anything else but uh, it's a time to tell the story of of one of the greatest martial artists of all times and 
That's Grandmaster Frederick Byrne, Dr. Taylor. Wow, yeah, the it's, name. It, it's, it's important because in the martial arts world, even in the world of sport karate, there's no sense of history. When I did the mm -hmm. first issue of One Point Magazine and I said, okay, who's the most deserving fighter? And I said, mm -hmm. oh, Nasty Anderson. So I put him on the cover, did the story with him. And when that mm -hmm. issue was released, I was surprised mm -hmm. because there was a hell of a lot of people that didn't know who Nasty was. And I was like, how Correct. can you not know at that point the greatest fighter in the sport up to that point? Because there's no Correct. sense of history yeah. in the sport. So with Correct. us doing projects like this, you know, we're leaving a, a legacy, a history. We're leaving the story. So, you know, it's important. Oh, yes, it's very important. Matter of fact, I, 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 I've turned down a whole lot of, you know, interviews and things like that over the years, you know. Uh, but it is important to shine a light on these great, great masters of the world, martial arts. Uh, um, as I was expressing, uh, the, the martial arts to me is a way of life. Some people, you know, just do it as a sport. But I guarantee the ones who uh, uh, do it as a way of life uh, actually fight better than those who just think of it as a, a career to, you know, to make money, which is good, but uh, uh, to stay alive is better. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an important concept, and I, I want to come back to that. Because, uh, yeah, I have a lot to, to ask you on that topic of martial arts as a way of life, because sometimes it seems like it sometimes it seems like we as instructors are failing in, in that area to get that message out. But I want to stay with the chronology first. So, um, you know, going from the beginning to middle to end. So at, we're at the point now where your mother said, that's it. You're out of martial arts. How yeah, were you able to get back? And how did you meet Master Godfrey? And how old were you at that point when you finally met him and started training again? Well, I can tell you that my mom, uh, we, uh, she, well, I'm very religious, religious now, meaning she was uh, a, a, a very, very uh, strict mom when it came to what, uh, um, going to church and, and, and learning uh, the, the truth of our existence is that my mom said, you know what? I don't want you doing that uh, Chang Chung stuff and everything. You, oh, no. you know, hurting people and purposely hurt you. And I told her, I said, Mom, it's not about hurting people. Uh, you know, it's about, you know, because, uh, I mean, it would be weird people walking around with the pajamas on and everything else. And my mom, right. you know, this is, this is not how you, my mother, my mother was, is, is a truly a, a, a warrior and everything. And so, uh, uh, she had six kids, and uh, my father was a merchant seaman, and he uh, very he didn't have the uh, most time to stay with us and play with us and everything because like they had to be out to sea for like uh, seven months. Uh, I would only see him during uh, 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 the Christmas season, and uh, that's it. So it was uh, she was uh, very intelligent, and she knew that. Uh, uh, all children need their parents, both the parents, to be in their lives. And without it, it becomes an imbalance that causes trouble in our what neighborhood. People mm -hmm. who uh, were uh, uh, people who were following the wrong direction because their parents weren't there to direct them in the right area. But my mom was there. I mean, and she knew what not to do. And, and I begged her to... Uh, uh, <laughs> to let me uh, continue doing the martial arts. And she said, that's good, but uh, I, I don't think it's right or fair that, that I got hurt. And I tried to express to her that, you know, um, that <laughs> it was mostly my fault why I got hurt is that I I went uh, full, with, full blast with one of the green belts and everything, who was one of the best in there and everything. And uh, uh, he, he did a technique on me and it was, awesome. I mean, he stuck his foot straight up in the air. I mean, I'm like, I'm laughing at him because I'm like, oh, the foot straight up in the air, it's not going to be able to hit me. And guess what? I got my head out of the way. I got my chest out of the way, but I didn't get my knee out of the way. And I ended up having to go to the hospital. Oh, and wow. So, yes. So that was the thing. But I never, ever uh, in, 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 uh, um, stopped having Charles as my sensei, especially as I got older and everything. But, uh, it's beautiful to have like two great uh, martial artists who uh, uh, help me to be the man that I am today. 
So when did your mother finally relent and say, okay, you can resume training? And again, we're looking for that. When did you meet well, Master you, Godfrey? Well, here's the funny part, because guess what? Once I tell you all this, you, it, it's, it's so funny, most people won't believe it. So anyway, so my mom said, okay, I'm going to let you um, uh, do martial arts, but you got to go to the church. You can't miss any days going to the church. So that was her bargaining thing, that I could go in the karate, uh, but uh, I have to make sure that I go to church uh, every uh, end of the uh, uh, well, every Sunday and every day. And okay. again, like I told you, I'm not gonna lie. To, I'll tell the truth, or the whole truth, and not but the truth. I couldn't stand it. I was like, oh my goodness, here it is. I got to be in here and, and, and <laughs> ask God to do all these things and. Only thing I wanted to do, I'm not gonna lie, is to learn to what martial arts because that little taste of it made me feel safe. I'm telling you, uh, at the times that I was dealing with, uh, it was not safe. Though. The, uh, I, been, I lived through the um, rights in Europe, and I can tell you that it was not a good scene. But it was good to go to church because I was praying that none of those bullets <laughs> shoot me or hit me, and they didn't. So. I had to uh, thank my mom for putting me in the right spot. So listen to this. We're at the church and everything. And so the Reverend Cousin said, oh, we got something real special going on here. Uh, we, we see that a lot of young people want to learn Chung uh, uh, Fu. And he, that's what he called it, Chung Fu or whatever. <laughs> and we have a, uh, a, 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 a master who is very, very good in the martial arts. And he's going to be teaching you. And... I went, wow, this is incredible. I, okay, I, I think I can get mom to what to sign off on this because you know it's going to be right in the church and the reverend and everything. She, so she would actually, uh, um, uh, like his right arm to the to the pastor and everything. So, uh, because uh, uh, even with this, um, <laughs> I just put this in real fast. Is that uh, um, so uh, spirituality? was something that uh, I believe is important. Because uh, even with martial arts, I found out that the greatest warriors are spiritual warriors, not just physical, because guess what? The, the things that I've seen my grandmasters do, super warriors, uh, uh, going through, uh, punching through uh, uh, stacks of what? concrete, one blow, I mean, uh, to see uh, a man that only weighed uh, about 160 pounds at the at his heaviest time that I would think, and he could just what go through uh, a stone with his bare one hands, and I I looked, I said, okay, uh, I just found out something really really good that uh, I could. I was in the choir, I couldn't sing, but I used to play the uh, drums and, and stuff like that, and. And the beautiful girls didn't like me because I was all skinny and everything. So uh, when they offered uh, karate at the what, school, I knew I was blessed because that is when uh, I started learning from Grandmaster Frederick and Dr. Taylor. What a name. <laughs> he got it. He got a long right. message. Yes. Um, it, it was just a blessing that I ended up uh, meeting Grandmaster Godfrey and, and I'll tell you one story because ninjas don't like to tell a whole lot of stories. This one is the, one of the best that I've seen. So, A, my mom, she signed off that I could be in the karate class. And I'm telling you, that was the uh, greatest thing that I could ever want to believe because, I mean, Charles Wilson, awesome, awesome, awesome teacher. Uh, and the fact that uh, not being able to go to, him, to his school and everything because of the what the, the injury but uh uh just i can say uh, i know i'm blessed because to to uh have a, a great grandmaster like grandmaster um is 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 priceless it's, it's not even a thing where a, a person would say well eugene floyd what is the your greatest accomplishment on uh, the martial arts what in the tournaments it was actually the training of Grandmaster Frederick Taylor, and I can uh, I can tell you that I would I'll give you a, a little story that happened 
right in front of my eyes in this serious stuff. So we're training one day and this, uh, I would just call him a, a, a bully or something. And I think he thought he was like a super gangster and everything. And he just did not like the fact that, you know, that a lot of people were following uh, Godfrey and learning real martial arts, which is to avoid trouble as much as possible. But when you cannot avoid it, you must go through it. And I'm telling you, just like those um, boards and bricks, those are uh, uh, lessons that uh, might just seem like they're just uh, uh, physical things, but they're physical things and spiritual things. And if you're a true spiritual warrior, you can go through a, 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 a stat without no injuries. But you better know the proper what techniques of it, the science of it. And that's what uh, Grandmaster Godfrey had uh, always done. And, I try to follow him. So, so when, uh, so we're doing good. The school is coming along good. We're, we're 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 learning a whole lot of great things and and the martial arts. And so, uh, I tell this story. I tell a few people. So, uh, when I left Charles, uh, all of my dojo brothers wanted us to stay together. So. Many of them started going, coming to the uh, church to train under uh, Fred Godfrey at that time. He wasn't Grand Master, <laughs> it was Fred Godfrey. And I will tell you, he, he was not like he's the black uh, Bruce Lee. He was already uh, doing mixed martial arts before anybody knew what that meant. And I can tell you that all the things that he taught me worked in uh, my ninja brothers. I mean, uh, I'm not the biggest uh, apple on the tree. Uh, um, Regiment Good, uh, incredible. Oh, I mean, uh, Jesse Harris, these individuals uh, were the, I would say the, that's the proper word. They are the people who helped me to be a great martial artist. And well, how so? Because I mean, I also I love Jesse. Also, I loved to, used to love to watch him fight. But was he part yes. of the? Uh, was he one of your dojo brothers, or what? What was your relationship with him? Yes, he. No matter of fact, actually, uh. uh uh, it's a whole lot of uh, different uh, martial artists, and even with Godfrey, even with, with me, uh, uh, he made sure that he actually, uh, what's the proper word? Uh, he taught us how to be the best that we could be. He could actually uh, study a student and he would tell him, to do different things that for, that I would do or Reggie and everything, he actually custom fitted each student with the style of their own. And I mean, that was really uh, a, a, a crazy thing because uh, there was still what we call people who, uh, you know, uh, strict for uh, martial artists from, from, from all over the world. Uh, they became stuck in a one-dimensional fighting. Godfrey never did that. He actually would take each student and give them the armor that might be 100% different from him, but it worked exactly for the students, which I, uh, I was... I was just blessed to be there, be in that school because he actually taught a person to fight in their own spirit. And your own spirit is very what well powerful once we learn these things, the inhale, the exhale, the, the meditation, all of those things were important, not just jump out there and punch and kick, but the knowledge, the psychological uh, warfare, all those things, I mean, we couldn't even call what he was teaching uh, 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 karate, because karate means empty hand. Uh, Godfrey, em 
आती है ओपन है टेस्ट बाइक ब्लैक विथ योर आर्म्स दीज थिंग्स वर लाइक अनबिलीवेबल दैट ही वॉज able to bestow this uh, and i will give one his secrets is is one of the secret is is that he first uh what with people's spirit and each spirit is is is, is a different and it has its own flow its own so he actually what's the word customize the martial arts none of my ninja brothers fight the way i fight they have their own flavor and move so thus they're like oh yes i just finished beat your dream for it all and i'm gonna go over here and beat up jesse harris and get what and guess what that's what they might have thought but they'd be looking for the same techniques but they will be 100 different and so that person who who believe that just hey, the, the quality of the training with master godfrey take us take us into the classroom like for example back then like how long were the lessons for example uh for example at least an hour to two hours <laughs> right <laughs> and that's what i'm trying to tell you yes so i know i know you being for uh, 45 30 minutes seconds, you know, 45 minutes no, no right. way <laughs> so i uh, i love that you uh, uh talked about this uh i could say uh that uh, for real uh grandmaster gaffrey i can tell you that uh he was the inventor of what is called customized martial arts okay to customly fit a person in the style and in the motion that will make them i would say invincible because just like that first is that if anybody noticed the the, the ninja turtles each one of them had different what colors each one of them were great in their own way because uh the master taught us how to be the best that we could be it was like uh as customization in the martial arts and how that often what, how often did you guys did you spar as part of the class like during a, a typical week a um, typical week every day every day okay <laughs> <laughs> Monday through Sunday and the Sunday is the only day we didn't what train. Okay, wow. 7 days or oh, 6 days a week you were working out. Yes. 6 days a week in the in the other day was set for going to church. Now he was teaching in in he was teaching in the church. Uh yes. so did you have to pay or was it was it free? No, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I call him a saint is that no. Okay. it was no what dudes or nothing like that it was that's what i'm trying to say about how blessed i am to have met a a a a i if 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 he uh wanted to pay i wouldn't i wouldn't mind because the, the things that we learned very few people on earth really to learn the things and and even uh most people might look at him and uh, uh you see a little small splinter of a man that's where the word splinter comes from <laughs> you know but his power uh incredible his humanity off the wall and so and uh yeah. how much you know about his background as far as um you know his training training roots and stuff well i can tell you a whole lot of stuff but then i would have to kill you <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Um <laughs> What what when you, when we think of ninjutsu, you know, we think of uh Master Ronald Duncan yes. and his uh, yes. and his two sons, his two boys. Yes. So, a weaponry is a large part of it, and I think he was Koga Koga Ryu, Koga Ryu okay. whatever. So, were there a uh, similar same branch, different branch? What was the relationship? Well, like I said, here's the beautiful thing. If we look at the ancient uh, ninjas, they had uh, various clans. It was right. not just one. Right. Uh, uh, most of the time, they would have to what interrelate with each other because of the fact that uh, the shogunites would make sure that the 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 ninja spies would do the things that they needed to do. That uh, the the ninja wasn't um, uh, like a a, a a warrior. They had like special forces. in the martial arts mm-hmm. which means that almost anything can become a weapon with them and most important is of course their what their brain 
But most people did not realize that uh, the, the truth behind the word ninjutsu isn't all about what killing and murdering. It is uh, making sure that you survive to live. Uh, the greatest technique that has been ever, um, what's the proper word, um, taught is run. I hated that Grandmaster Gaku used to tell me, uh, uh, run. I like, I'm not in here. To, <laughs> I ain't say this out loud. I'm right. sitting <laughs> I'm in here to what, learn how to defend myself. There's some crazy stuff out there, you know? And here it is. There's some crazy stuff out there. Uh, if you got a chance to run, it might just save your life. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, 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 let me tell you, hardcore Newark, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, I saw some incredible uh, evil, and I've seen some incredible gracious beautiful protection by these true uh, martial artists. Uh, Godfrey wasn't really interested in tournaments. Uh, the only reason why he got in tournaments because I kept begging him. And he, yeah, uh, I, 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 let me let me jump in for a second. I, I remember, you know, we've had, you know, conversations over the years okay. and you probably don't remember these, but I don't forget anything because I'm like a sponge. Uh -huh. You told me once that he was basic. He was holding you guys back from tournaments. Yes. And at a certain point, you thought that he was holding you back because, you know, you guys weren't good enough yet. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But then when he finally released you guys and, you you know, you saw the truth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. I After that, I uh, I thought I threw away all my negative nerd, uh, nerd <laughs> attitude, which, you know. And guns shooting, it wouldn't even matter because his his technique is more spiritual than physical. You can't uh, actually the, the the ninja is uh, considered to be a a, a, a a ghost. Well, a ghost is a spirit, and thus those spirits are difficult to overcome. If, uh, the, the, just like a, a person uh, uh, the egotistic, uh, egotistical mindset would be their own destruction. Uh, I teach my students to what, run. Now, run fast, run hard. I have what, uh, three or four or five people, this happened to me, three or four or five people who were trying to what, beat you, run. And feel sorry for them if they catch up with you. Right, because you might, you might be saving another life, not just yours, but uh, that other person's too. So, uh, uh, a person says, uh, uh, "Eugene, um, uh, I I've seen you do this, and I have seen you do that, and uh, you." But in sparring, we got a um a code of contact that contract that we would really believe in. We don't want to what hurt someone if it's a sport. We want them to uh, be able to recover from whatever injuries or uh, whatever. Yeah, that that happen. reminds me of one of your famous uh, your famous sayings: "Enjoy the face, don't destroy the face." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like I said, the bottom line is to, I, I I say it again: uh, um, the martial arts uh, saved my life. I could say that, uh, 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 of course, a uh, uh, um, preacher saved my life, but in the instance of uh, growing up in a very very hostile world it looks like this is martial arts is a very important thing because now you have people who actually had a cause to 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 um do evil which was hey i'm hungry i'm gonna i'm gonna steal what i gotta steal kill what i gotta kill and, and that is the horrible truth of our existence but to have just like i expressed you know uh, uh the greatest warriors, meaning the Shaolin warriors, were also spiritual warriors. So oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that's I mean, the, the, the actual the actual reason they incorporated martial arts was to protect their spirituality. Correct, correct. And so uh, I think that uh, it was I was triply blessed. Uh, two great masters, and also having great pastors. Of the uh, I still go to a church, and I. And I realized that there are powers that are granted to us if we follow a proper, a proper, uh, I would say, spiritual thing. Uh, 
some of the things that uh, I did, I didn't realize that I could do. <laughs> like, Eugene, you did that? I like, uh, I did it. I, I just, uh, I just broke uh, three current creek uh, slabs. Not today. I'm just talking about it. Uh, um, and it was on fire. And my again, I only weighed like maybe 140. You know, a teenager and everything. And and Godfrey didn't care about that. He like, uh, here it is. How old are you? I like, okay, I'm I'm 14. Uh, he like, oh, were you 14 years old? I said yes. He said, um, uh, are you prepared to fight a man? I was like, why do I mean, why do I have to fight a man? I like, uh, can I fight a boy too? I mean, no, no. Because guess what? If you think that you, you set your gear for only one warrior or the sport, then you're in trouble. Right. Uh, after we taught it for self defense, we we could use it in tournaments and but also never ever take it beyond the point of it being a sport. But we have to also realize that uh, uh, a real fight will, uh, he said, a real fight can uh, go out. Uh, Easily, but a martial with martial arts, you have to be able to realize that it's about self defense, not about what attacking or fighting. If you have no other what choice, you try to run, they uh, they catch up with you. You better save your life because there's nobody else going to be there to do that. So I can I can tell you that, uh, especially with our dojo brothers, I was very proud of me because we would not let that power. Over what's this? Well, the, the the power of, of, of the skills overpower your work is spirituality. Uh, and you got some people who do not understand that this stuff is ancient, and it just was a blessing that I was able to you know to get those lessons. Okay, when did he finally uh, release you guys in? And and you started compete started competing. When did you finally start competing? Yes, seventies. Uh, 69. I, I was, I was, I was uh, you, you don't get a, 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 a belts like uh, the other, um, but Grandmaster Godfrey would give uh, every six months, every six months, he would do the testing. The bottom line is that if you got one thing wrong, uh, you got another six months. Wow. Then, Anything past what any and this is what happens. You have some people that end up being black belts in three three years, which is okay. But Godfrey, I uh-uh, know you. You ain't got no uh, three 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 years, five years. Each time you go to what uh, rank, uh, uh, I'm not going to lie. I was not able to keep up that same type of uh, uh, what's the word stringency in the what martial art. But I kept as much as the average person could handle. Uh, um, for me, everyday teaching was good. I mean, it was not everyday. Mom, like, okay, uh, you're not doing no karate on Saturday, and I agreed with her. Oh, the camera! Like, you're cutting your mouth off again. I agreed with her, and the funny thing, just like I said, is that uh, um, uh, Sundays and everything else. Um, we wasn't allowed to go, and I went to Grandmaster Godfrey. I said, well, you know, the problem is that here it is. We won't be able to test any of these techniques. So he, that's when he allowed us to, you know, start to go on. Ah, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And so it was like I told you, to, and I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, I was really afraid because, like I said, uh, I like, to even enter in the tournaments because I was like, you know what? I, we haven't tested this stuff with anybody. You know what I'm saying? Godfrey, right. you know, we, 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 of course we went at it in the school, but we just in the city brothers. And by the time we got into a uh, competition, that's when I realized that this man was a martial arts genius. He actually taught each student to fight in their own work spirit. Thus, uh, you uh, you might see Eugene Floyd and do a certain technique or whatever. And then you go and say, you know what? I just I just beat up uh, Eugene Floyd. I'm gonna go over here. T- 
to Reginald Good. I already know the technique because guess what? That's what it is. Each system has its own what technique. And if you can what's the, crack the code of it, like what is their, uh, I would say, the number one go-to when it doesn't work, the opponent now is afraid, not of the uh, person, but afraid that I don't have a, another technique that I should be using. After we made sure that we uh, had gears, uh, had levels. But when you so when you first started competing, you were a teenager or an adult at that point. Oh no! Matter of fact, like I said, uh, with Godfrey, uh, uh, that was the beautiful thing is that I was the one always telling him we should go, we should go, we should go, la la la, we should go. I know he got sick and tired of it. Uh, I got a little taste of it when I was in um in Charles School and everything, and so. But we sparred though. We had to what spar. We had to what. Uh, we had to fight uh, three, four, sometimes even five at one time because that's what he was really what serious about about uh, the fighting, the street fighting, and the street fighting. His what he would always tell us was was very important is okay. Uh, the best way to overcome an uh, uh, enemy is to run. I hated that. I was about, well, this is some corny what martial arts juice would be a shame. <laughs> <laughs> One, what the heck are you talking about? I, I already knew that technique from the riots. <laughs> right. But he was right. Sometimes a good run is better than a weak stand, you know. And but in terms of the competition, again, competing in the tournaments, Oh, yeah. Like what? 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 Um, did you compete like beginner? Or did you did you start an intermediate competing in green purple division? Like what divisions did you compete in when you first started? Can I tell you the truth? Yep. Uh, black belts, and we were in black belts. Oh wow! You started in the black belt division. Whoa! Yeah. Amazing. Got, that's another thing. See, Godfrey was for the street. It was all about the survival. Uh, 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 the point of it is to be able to survive. So uh, with him, hey, uh, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're a black belt. I will fight you and I will beat you. No, you're a human being and your belt don't mean nothing. <laughs> your so, belt don't mean nothing, yeah. So as a competitor, Floyd the competitor, you were always a, a joy to watch. But you were also very outspoken. And I'm going to remind you of a couple of things you said. Or yeah. One time, one time, and this is one of the first times I actually saw you too. So this is now around, uh, this has to be like around 79, 79, yeah. 80, 80, when I was training, yeah. I was training with um, Master Little John. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. you won the, you won the tournament. We're in New York. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, you know, Brooklyn, one of those, one of those ghetto tournaments or whatever. You won the tournament and uh -huh. you raised your hand up high and you said, we train hard in Jersey. <laughs> now, <laughs> what one of Master Banks, Aaron Banks students, I forget his name, mm -hmm. but he, he he's it's the one that Aaron Banks pr promoted to a uh, 10th degree black belt. Yes. Uh -huh. so I forgot his name, but and he got offended and, and he was like, mm -hmm. yeah, well, we train hard in New York, too. <laughs> but <Right>. but, <laughs> but uh, nobody could, I could tell you, no lie, no one could really be able to see the, 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 the real Ninja Turtle system, which again, it, we we had um, the blessings of having like a, um, well, like, a, um, I don't know, it didn't exist before, but what, what Godfrey really did was that we customized the martial arts for each student, which is not what easy, but Godfrey was able to do it. Uh, it's Can just you like tell a, us? Can you can you tell us that story about how the Ninja Turtle came together and then it, it came apart? Because I remember in the in in the early eighties, it was it it had already been separated. You had the turtle system with that instructor. Yeah. He was the heavy set guy. I forget his name yeah, also. That was, yeah. mm -hmm. He so, was uh, excellent. Uh, you know, he's, he had produced some excellent students for sure. Yeah, the turtle the, the turtle system and the ninja system was the most beautiful thing that really happened because just like uh, the turtle system was very what, physical. Uh, and you have some people who, you know, they can only understand that uh, that you could take a, um, a, um, a chopstick and destroy a person with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
uh, the reality is that, uh, um, but here it is, just like uh, growing up in Newark, uh, you have some things that you could uh, learn over a lifetime, but uh, in Newark, you better be able to catch up on it as fast as possible because uh, just from walking home from school or, or whatever in those trying times uh, was, I would say, um, zero level. And just like right now, this, this uh, I don't call it a, a, a upheaval or whatever, we have to be able to overcome all types of uh, war. Godfrey didn't stop it of punching and kicking. Uh, he believed in weapons, uh, guns, and everything else, but they are the last what resort. Understand? And so uh, your hands are weapons, and your mind is a weapon. And the things that he taught, I never went forgotten. I will never forget those things. I will always uh, honor him because he kept it what real. Uh, uh, sparring with him. I'm telling you, uh, it's untouchable. I, I'm going to give you one story that I seen for myself. Uh, okay, good. Uh, this one is one of my favorite uh, uh, things that uh, I can say I've seen uh, with Grandmaster Godfrey. Like I said, he he wasn't interested in tournaments, but he did allow us to do that. And I'm very proud uh, to say that he is, uh, I would say, a martial, uh, a renaissance person. It, yeah, it, very it, progressive it, and yeah. open-minded, it seems so like. Open-minded, there you go. So <laughs> it's so cool because, like I said, I mean, you know, everybody talk about the, uh, um, the, the what's it, the punches and kicking of the tournament. So uh, this is the, uh, the time where I've seen someone try to, uh, Right, Grandmaster Godfrey in church. So, uh, wow. so we are uh, just like every other day, we're going through our training and everything. <laughs> and and uh, it's funny to me, but it wasn't funny at that particular time. So, we're starting the class off, and this guy just comes into the to the church, and he and he going, oh, Fred, oh, you know, like this guy is calling me. Uh, Master Godfrey Fred. I didn't like him before when I just heard him say that. Where's Fred? And that's how he said it like that. <laughs> Where's Fred at? You know? So the guy comes in like, you know, I know you Godfrey here. I've been going here since you was this age and that age, and, and you ain't no real what master and stuff like that. The guy, he was like not very tall, but I mean he was like, I would say he weighed about about 180 pounds but every last bit of it was muscle strength and i mean it looked like uh he probably spent a lot of time in jail doing this stuff <laughs> uh, uh but so he's in front of godfrey in the school he has us all sit down and, and the guy comes up and says uh i want to fight you godfrey I, I i told you that you know what I'm sick and tired of hearing your name around the street and everything. Everybody talking about you, San Diego, martial arts, superhero, and all this garbage. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to show you that you're a fraud. So um, we're sitting and we're sitting down and we're shocked because this guy is like diesel, like I don't know what. I mean, that's what we call it. The muscles are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I look at Reg and Reg looks back at me and Reggie starts smiling. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Why are you smiling? You're like, no, we got to take care of life. No, man, we, we we should do this. And 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 I got ready to get up. And 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 and, and Master Godfrey saw me because I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I had to tell you, I I dealt with so much what street fighting and everything, and um, I I realized that this guy's gonna come in here and. And beat up my instructor. Uh, nope. So I stand up. And Godfrey said, "Sit down. Or I'm gonna throw you out of the school." And I sat down real fast because I don't care what I knew I was gonna be his student. So 
I mean, he started cursing, and and Godfrey did not like uh, anybody. We could even say poo poo, <laughs> stuff like that. He was like nice and calm. I look at him, the guy is almost like in his face, like spitting while he's talking. And I'm like, I stood up. Godfrey said, "Sit down," and I stood up, stayed up. And then he said, "If you don't sit down, you will no longer be in my school." And I sat down. And he said, please, uh, he talked to the guys. He's just, you know, having our training and everything. And we don't really uh, want any but violence in the church and everything. And the guy said, F you. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And so, it's, I mean, Godfrey's really, you know, he's like, the guy is, is, is not tall, but I mean, every last inch of his muscles. And so I look over at Reg. Reg looks and kept me down. down. So I sat. So Godfrey said nicely, okay, my brother, whatever I did wrong to you, I accept it. He said, no, nah, you ain't getting away with it that easy. Godfrey didn't do anything to him. It's just, I guess he heard enough street stuff about him to figure that he wanted to show that he could beat up this guy. But I could tell you that. Camera, this camera, gen- sir, camera. Yes, this gentleman, this gentleman, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, he must have been doing a whole lot of pull-ups because I didn't see where his neck ended, where his his, his biceps <laughs> and everything. And I was like, I was like, I looked over to Reg. I said, Reg, are we going to help him? Reg said, No. I said, What's wrong with you, Reg? You the you the top guy here? He said, No. He said, Godfrey says, Sit. Me, I wasn't going to. He ain't going to move. I'm going to do what my instructor said. So I follow his lead. This guy got in uh, Godfrey's face, and I mean, he's right in him, and, and Godfrey's talking, but he's actually spitting in Godfrey's face while he's talking. And I'm like, and the guy said, um, why don't you just tell everybody you're a fraud, you're not real, and I'll, you know, I'll give you a pass. Godfrey looks at us, and I had my head down, because I was like, and the guy said, Godfrey, I'm going to whip your butt. You ain't nothing but a fake what martial artist. You're not no real what fighter. I, just like I expressed to everybody out there, I'm going to whip your butt. And then he, Godfrey said, okay, well, you know, we'll come back later on. The student's not here. He said, no, it's going to be now. He said, and if you don't, I'm going to whip their butt and your butt. I looked around. He almost had like a little tear in his eye. And I thought the little tear was that, you know, I mean, Godfrey is scared of this guy. I'm like, Reg, what's going on? Reg looks at me and says, shut up. Because I used to, I do did a lot of talking. <laughs> so guy says, okay, no more play. He, 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 he tore up his what? The t-shirt. Because it was hot that summer. And to show his what, muscles, of course. And Godfrey said, you know, he's, the guy said, F those kids. Once he said that, it got quiet in there. Godfrey said it, he said it like this, as soft as anything. So he said, please, could you please leave in the church or you can go out somewhere else and do it. Guy went super what crazy. He started walking. He started running towards Godfrey. Right, Godfrey put his hand out like a stop sign and stopped. And the guy stopped. Godfrey said, "You really want to fight, man?" The guy, of course, he cursed. He said, he says, "You really want to fight?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, I want to fight. Why you think I'm here?" Blah blah blah. And then he said, uh, "You really want to fight?" And he said, "Mf to Godfrey," and said, "What do you think I'm here to do?" He said, "Are you ready?" The guy said. Yeah, I'm ready. That's why I'm here. Spit falling into my man's face. Oh, no. So, Godfrey looks, and I see he looks over at us and he looks back towards the guy. He said, Okay. You really want to fight? I said, Yeah, well, that's why I'm here. You really want to You do? You really want to fight? I said, Yeah. Godfrey stepped towards him. The guy moved back. Godfrey looked away from him. Ran towards the wall. Godfrey is now jumped chest first into the wall. 
went through the concrete, no, the, 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 all the way to the daggone two by fours, the, the daggone camera, sir, it camera. Fell. It fell. It, the daggone, he went through the, 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 the panel, the, the two by four, into the daggone cement on the other side, the concrete. Mm. And as he walked back, he went to the guy and said, are you ready? He looked at Godfrey. He looked at us. And then he looked towards the wall. And you could actually see, this is all true. The stone, the, the bricks on the upper side were cracked. He looked at Godfrey. I looked up. To see what went on next, the guy was gone. He was he he he, he disappeared better ninja than us. Mm. And I looked at and I looked at Reg, and I didn't say anything. I just put my thumbs up, and that was the time when I realized that this gentleman was truly and will always be one of the greatest martial artists of his time. Not for what he did in the ring, but for what he did for some little, uh, some little street hoods who didn't have enough money to go to some of the best schools. Right. <laughs> awesome. Amazing.